Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video I'm going to be talking about parametric assets in Blender 2.9. I'm going to be showing a quick demonstration of what parametric assets are and how useful they can be. In the demonstration, I'm going to be using a library I'm working on called Home Builder. The purpose of this is to allow designers an intuitive way of creating interior spaces while also providing builders the engineering information they need to build the physical objects. Now this is a big project, and I still have a lot of assets and functionality to develop. But at this point, I wanted to at least show the main concepts and importance of these types of libraries. So here in Blender, I have the Home Builder Library active, and these are the different categories that you would typically use to create an entire scene. But in this video, I'm going to be designing a custom bathroom vanity. And so here in the cabinet category, you'll notice that we can drag these assets into the 3D viewport. Now you'll notice that they follow the cursor position, and so here we can drop these into the scene. Now, the first thing that makes these parametric is the fact that you can drag these items in and they'll snap to other objects in the library. And so there's information in these assets that allows them to interact in a way that makes it very easy for users to work with. And so you'll see you can just drag these in and just snap them right next to the other cabinets within the library. Now, apart from having very quick ways of placing these assets in the scene, you'll notice that if we select one of these cabinets and right click, we have these two additional commands here at the top. So here we can first access the cabinet prompts. Now this is all of the parametric information that's available for this cabinet. So of course we can change the width of this by just changing this value right here. And apart from the size and the location information for these assets. We have specific information about this cabinet. So here in the main options, we can add fillers, change the size of the base assembly, adjust the countertop overhang, things like that. Now here in this next tab, we have information for the exterior. And so if we wanted to change this from a single door, which you can see that we can you know, open up this right from here, or change the door swing, you know, what we want. We can also just swap out the exterior that we want. So if we want this to be drawers, we can select that and then update here. And so that will add in the drawer fronts that we have. And so now we can adjust the size of the drawer fronts independently. Now by default, these are all grayed out because they're going to automatically calculate equally as the cabinet changes size. But if we wanted to change the height of one of the drawer fronts, we can always uncheck one of these options and then change the size. So you can see that as we adjust that, it's going to equally space the remaining drawer fronts. Now for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this equal and we'll click OK. And so you could do that for each of these products. So here, if we select this middle cabinet and go to the prompts, again, you'll notice that as you change the size, it's going to automatically adjust. So it knows how to keep these products connected in a way that you would expect. And so for this center product here, I'm gonna add in a filler. And with this, I'm gonna add this pretty decent size filler that will make this into more of kind of a furniture piece. Now, not only that, since this is gonna be a bathroom vanity, let's go and just add in a sink. And so here, if we select the sink options, it will open up this other dialog, which we can then determine what sink we wanna use. Here, I just have some samples that we can select, and then what faucet we wanna use. So with those selected, I'll just go and click OK, and that's gonna add that right to this product. And you'll notice that it automatically cuts the hole in the countertop, so it really saves a lot of time for the user just to be able to select the information they want and have the parametric data just automatically assign it where it needs to be located. Next, just to make this a little bit more interesting here, I'm gonna go ahead and set back these drawer units. So I'm gonna go and set the depth of these to be 19. I'll do that for both of these. And now we have a little bit more interesting of a product that we're working on here. But one important thing to know is that you know, even though this functionality allows you really quick ways of adjusting the sizes and different options of all these products, you still have all of the functionality of Blender available to you. So all of the different modeling tools that Blender has. And so if I wanted to customize the shape of the filler and this countertop piece here, what we can do is we can just select all of those items, right click, and then use this option to hard lock the part size. Now we use this because all of these parts are parametric. And so if we wanna make customizations to them, 
beyond what the options allow for. We can use that option and now we can go into edit mode and now we can just make whatever modifications we want. So just for fun, let's go ahead and just select these two edges here and I'm gonna use the bevel command. So control B and we'll just slide that out and we'll add quite a few subdivisions there. So now we have these kind of rounded edges on the filler and we'll just go and do the same thing to the countertop here. So we'll go ahead and use control B and just bevel that like so. So as you can see, you have a lot of different ways of modifying this information, but there's more to it. So apart from just having the library of items in the prompts page that you can use to make modifications to, here in the Home Builder library, there's also a library interface which allows you a lot of different flexibility. So here in the first tab, we can change different defaults for the library. So the default cabinet sizes, the cabinet construction, different sizes for the entry doors and windows, things like that. But we can also adjust materials. And so material pointers are a core concept to be able to quickly swap out different materials for your scene. And so here, these are a list of all of the material pointers that we have in the library. And you'll notice that they're broken up to where here we have the exposed cabinet surfaces, the exposed cabinet edges, the interior surfaces, the door surface. So we have a lot of flexibility. And so if we wanted to change the material of our product here, we can just go and select a category. So let's just go and select a melamine color here. And let's just go and change this to be black melamine. So here I'm going to go ahead and select all of the pointers that I want to change. And then once we're done, we can update the materials. And so this provides a very quick way to just try out different color combinations and things like that within your scene. So maybe let's go ahead and just change this to be a dark gray for right now for our cabinets. And then maybe we'll change our countertop surface to be this high gloss. And so this gives us a really good way of just seeing what this product is going to look like within our scene here. And so let's go ahead and see what else is available. Now moldings is something I'm still developing, but basically being able to apply base and crown molding to your entire project, having that automatically calculated is going to soon be available within this library. But we also have the ability to change the cabinet fronts. And so right now we're just using a generic slab door, but here let's go and change to a shaker door. So we'll select that. And then here, the same as the pointers, we can just assign what doors we want to assign this pointer. And so if we just wanted to change, let's say the drawer fronts, we can change that and then update the cabinet fronts. And you'll notice that that just changes the drawer fronts. But if we want all of them, we'll just go and adjust them all and then update that. So again, since all of these parts are parametric, the application knows how to swap out different things very quickly and still retain the parametric ability of this product. Of course, we have the ability to adjust hardware as well. And so here we have different categories. So maybe we want to use some knobs for the drawers. We can just go and select what style we want and then assign that to the drawers. Maybe we'll go ahead and use a different size bar pole for the door. So here we'll go ahead and just select Let's see one of these and update our doors. And so now when we update the poles, you can see how that's going to adjust the hardware that's being used for not only the drawer fronts, but also the doors. And maybe that's a little bit too big of a handle for the door. So let's go ahead and try out maybe this one here. And that looks a bit better there. And then the final tab here is thumbnails. And this is just a list of all of the parametric assets in this library. And like I said, I have a lot more products to create, but this just provides a quick way of generating the renderings for the thumbnails that show up in the library. Now, I have some ideas of how to speed up development for this project. So if this is something that you'd be interested in supporting, either through a Patreon, purchasing training, or additional assets, please leave a comment in this video or better yet use the contact page on my website and just say that you're interested in supporting and this will give me a good idea of how to proceed because I have big plans of where I want to take this. I'd like to create an official roadmap and really start speeding up the progress of this library but it may require some support from the community. So let me know if this is something you are interested in supporting. I'll release more information very soon about this on how to get access to everything. 
And I'd like to thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel for future updates, and I'll see you in the next one.